now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Oge lekere eruola mbwege jinye nwanke mado otito. My dear friends, the gospel passage this morning is familiar to everybody from Unsoka Diocese because it contains that sentence, that request, that project. We want to see Jesus. In the past, we have reflected on the meaning of this request for us. We have reflected on the project that this statement, this request is for our diocese. We have reflected on the challenge that it presents to all of us as priests and as Christians. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. This request made of Philip is placed within a context that is important if we want to understand exactly what it is telling us. Nendo biar Jerusalem makuriri kedo oriri ana kwado ihe oriri pask oriri nke nga bi nga fega nga fere the paschal feast drew so many visitors to Jerusalem now go and read again the entire chapter 12 of John's gospel Take your Bible and read chapter 12. The greatest sign that Jesus worked, that's miracle, while he was on earth, was the raising of Lazarus. And when Lazarus died, he was not near message came to him that his friend was dead. And he decided to go back. The disciples were not comfortable with that. But he told them that it was good that they went. O Gerugo, but each time Jesus would tell us the hour has not come, the hour has not come, the hour has not come. But with the death of Lazarus, Jesus affirmed that the hour had come. Series of events were set in motion and there was no going back anymore. They have been wanting to kill him and he always escaped from them. And at a point, he went back to the other side of Jordan to draw strength. But this time, not only that he came and raised Lazarus from the dead, but he even thanked God that it was going to happen. When the Jews saw that he had raised Lazarus from the dead, they decided not only to kill him, but also to kill Lazarus. Mary, the matter, we bore you already. 
iji kelie maka no raise the one he now that was the place that Mary anointed his feet and even his treasurer his closest one of his closest trusted friends became envious he said to go the hour had come that wasn't all Jesus left Bethany who that was near Jerusalem this was close to the feast of Pasch so many pilgrims were there i remember i always reminded you that during the paschal festival because of the number of visitors to jerusalem the governor the governor was of of, of uh, judea was on security alert pilate set his police and soldiers all over the place and the chief priests as well Marano no ga bo ge ndo na ar na temple je me business ndo sacramental mbe bishop je le na ndo sacramental ne vio zero anu ga je temba na akoka o ga do shiru mbe na ere sacramental ye he ere le ga bo sacramental te gbro go ga ma sacramental now ndo sacramental and what did jesus do in the synoptics this was the period he entered jerusalem triumphantly and drove those people off out of the temple akwam gwaru no setigo john chapter 12 tells us that after rising lazarus from the dead jesus triumphantly entered jerusalem iyomu anas no ge erulegi orun iedebo ofume as he entered jerusalem the people heard he was coming whereas pilate had arranged his soldiers on horse par on on horse on on back of horses and chariots fully armed and ready for any revolt nobody talked about them jesus entered on top of a calf a colt and the whole crowd in jerusalem attention moved to him and they were shouting hosanna john chapter 12 verse 19 says when the jews the leaders of the people saw this they said to themselves na iha karigo kwa o iha karigo be careful he told themselves look We are getting nowhere with us. What are we doing? There's a statement. Look, the whole world has gone after him. Oh how they go to make when this man. What are we doing? That was chapter verse 19. And to confirm what these Jewish leaders said that the whole world was now after him Jew, Greeks they were not Jews Greeks came they had come for the feast and they approached Philip and made a request go back to John chapter 1 Iya chi me ja gma John's Gospel chapter 1 Mbe John the Baptist na me ana eku okuchuku Jesu aga here Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world The second day behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world Two of his disciples left and followed Jesus and Jesus asked them Tell me uno choko what are you looking for Lord where do you live and he told them come and see who were those disciples Philip Andrew 
These were among the first Jewish disciples of Jesus according to the Gospel of John. And immediately he became a disciple. Philip went and called Nathaniel. Andrew went and called Peter. They became disciples and called other people to come and experience him. The same word that Jesus addressed to Philip, come and see, was the word that Philip addressed to Nathaniel, come and see. From chapter 1, they had been following him and seeing. Other people, other Jews had been following him and seeing. And we hear, St. Paul tells us that the Jews are looking for miracles, signs. The Greeks are looking for knowledge, wisdom. But what is central to a Christian is the crucified Christ. Which may seem foolish. But that is the foolishness of God. And now in chapter 12, the verse of today, the passage of today's gospel, these two first Jewish disciples who we are called, we are the ones to announce the arrival of the first Gentile disciples who wanted to see Jesus. Now the time has come. Because he was meant for the rising and fall of many. He was to be a light to the Gentiles and salvation to the Jews. When he is lifted up, he will draw all human beings to himself. But up till now, it seemed that only the Jews were the ones interested in encountering him. For the first time, we hear clearly... Yes, we heard about his encounter with the Samaritan woman, his encounter with the Syrophoenician woman, his encounter with the centurion who was not a Jew. But this time, for the first time, we hear an explicit request. So what I want to tell you is that this is the context of the exclamation of joy of Jesus. If even other nations are now looking for Jesus, now the time to go for the real thing has come. The gospel tells us that Philip was from Bethsaida. Philip and Andrew apart from being the first Jewish disciples, according to John, also had Greek names. So these men, these Greeks, felt it easier to approach them. We have reflected on all this before. But there is something else I want you to take away today. And it is one simple message. Not long. All of you know, Volumus Jesum Videre. We want to see Jesus. That is my motto, and that has become your motto. Today I want you to know, Jesus wants to see you. Jesus wants to see us. Turn it round. Instead of volumus Jesum videre, let us now take it as Jesus knows videre vult. On our worry about the Latin. Jesus knows videre vult. Jesus wants to see us. Uh, 
Ono marga na ada masuk na oga na pog. Oga na pog. And uh, I have experienced it personally many times as bishop. One day, somebody gave me money, ego, big money for my priest. And later, I came back and called the priest. Say, Abiko, Father, I would want to see you tomorrow at breakfast. That was all. I did not explain. When he came at breakfast, I invited him to eat breakfast first before I told him why I was looking for him. Awesome, Father Bishop. Half a kenny, huh? See, I really made you toto. Awesome, yeah, I got a real toto. Men care, Pahutar Nushunya, Mubia Kalagia, Dodre, Nelly Table. That once he received my call that I wanted to see him, his appetite went and he started calling all his friends and family. <laughs> Bishop Nekim Unutim Nekberi Amamun Kim Mary Mobun Kasari and Amun Mary. When I laughed, I laughed. But when eventually I gave him the money and I explained where it was coming from, he was in tears. But I asked myself a question. What has the bishop become in the church that when he sends for his priests, they become afraid? Asking Papa Nikig. Papa Nikig. No, but the problem is, is the problem with Papa or with me? But the fact remains, Jesus wants to see us. That was why he came. That was why he became a human being. He became a man. And that was why he suffered. So that wherever he will be, all of us who are his friends will be there. This gospel. We don't know eventually what happened with those Greeks. But we know that Jesus exclaimed that the hour had come and he begged the Father to glorify him at the peak of his social, political fame. That was the moment he said, the time has come for me to return to the Father. The hour has come. He's looking for each one of us and many of the events in our lives are announcing the same thing. It is not just about the natural hunger and desire that each one of us has for God and for an encounter with God in Christ. It is also about God's using of events and persons in our lives to invite us to an encounter. Jesus wants to see you. You remember John chapter 11 verse 28. When Jesus arrived Bethany for the raising of Lazarus, Martha heard it first and ran to meet him. After the exchange with Martha, Martha ran and called Mary. John eleven twenty eight. The master is here and he wants to see you. In some chapels, in parish houses, some priests have written at the door to the chapel where the blessed sacrament is. The master is here and he wants to see you. In this church, in this Eucharist, the master is here. 
Jesus is here and he wants to see you. He wants to see me. He wants to see us. But in order. In order. Are you the one present in this church? Or is it your shadow? Are you here? Are you attentive to that invitation? But the last point is, if the master calls for you to see him, you have to leave and go. And in that living is some type of death. son of David, have mercy on me. They told him to keep quiet. He kept shouting, son of David, have mercy on me. And they told him, he told them, call him here. And they said, he's calling you. Jesus wants to see you. And what did the man do? That cloak he had been using to cover himself from cold, he threw it away. The only source of security he had in his blindness, he abandoned it. He let it go. Now, how much of you is dying? What is it about you that is dying, that you are letting go this Lenten period so that you can freely go and encounter the Lord who wants to see you? And that is the new life. Because if you are where he is, you will bear fruit. You bury your pride. You bury your ego. You bury your ambitions. You bury your resentments. You bury your anger. You bury your greed. You bury all those. And this, that burying will suffocate you. If a seed, a grain of corn, if a seed could tell the story of what it sees under the ground before Uhute, everything that was associated with that seed is lost. The only thing remaining is the essential that gives rise to a plant that is completely new. And when you see Omeoka, there is nothing that suggests to you that it is from Ekroka until when this corn begins to appear and you see so many other grains in that one Ekroka. It takes time before the death you are dying now for your faith, for your belief, for your desire to encounter Jesus. It takes time before it begins to germinate, to grow, and to bear fruit. You know, I hang when in Nigeria, Kitane will not very much, but sowing of seeds. Sowing of seeds. You come and sow the fruit of your labor as a seed for a harvest in future. You have an intention you are praying for. You give a sign of your sincerity by giving something that is from your labor. Unfortunately, that has become commercialized by some so-called ministers of the gospel. Sowing of seed, come and buy some miracle. But it is true. If sincerely, you give up something important to you as part of your desire to encounter God. 
it is authentic, it is salutary, it is good. But Ihemwere kam genyenna Ihemwere kam genyenna Ihemwere kam genye chukona mame wegi he ewere mo wemye Eh so we can work here be ne wungu genye The invitation is to give your life first Sow your life as seed first before you bring the money Surrender your life first at the foot of the cross where that seed was sown. And that same blood that watered that seed and gave it new life will water your own seed. And it is your life that has to be new. Not just your business or your family or your work. It is your life. That has to be new and give bare fruit, give life to new seeds. So, bear in mind, Sorry, and then do ya and key were room way in ye. Wouldn't do I ya come again? I kept razors. Men do I in Surya who take up on door hole. Easter is approaching, it's just exactly two weeks away. By next Sunday, it will be Palm Sunday. The upper Sunday will be celebrating Easter. You are like the seed that Jesus is asking for. He wants to see you. He wants to penetrate you. He wants to possess you so that you become one with him. Die with him and be with him wherever he is. For if you keep holding yourself back, if you keep holding yourself back, the gift of your life back because you love this life so much, you have lost it. In that total surrender, that is where you will gain the life in full. Jesus knows videre vult. Jesus wants to see us. In a way, he has a Zakog. Ije ze gug moje no chite nyaga na mbeje so na ikanya sije wero nwogje je jati ya na eka